Jeanette. I am Constantine and this is the first installment of my Japanese film series. Now I thought we should start this out right with one of my all-time favorite films, Takashi Miike's 1999 audition. Um, now I know that this is definitely a classic and a lot has been said about I know, and a lot has been said about this before, but what I wanted to talk about specifically was Takashi Miike's film adaptation of Murakami Ryu's novel. So unfortunately, even though the film audition is so famous, the novel has not been translated into English yet, though I do believe a UK edition is available. Um, so what I've done is I've translated the final chapter of Audition and put it up online at my blog. There is a link in the sidebar, wherever that, that sidebar might be. Um, and you guys can read the final chapter and compare it for yourself. The book was first serialized and released in installments. Uh, in Penthouse Japan, which I think is rather ironic because Audition is not the story I would associate with looking at porn. Compared to some of Miike's other films like Ichi the Killer and Visitor Q, Audition is really very slowly paced um, and Miike has shown a lot of restraint. Instead of exploiting some of the more graphic elements of Murakami's story, such as the part where Yamazaki tortures Aoyama's pet beagle to death in front of him, which is actually a very long and drawn out scene. Or where Aoyama kicks her with his bloody stump of a leg where his foot was severed. Miike has created a really brilliant, well-paced adaptation. And I think this is in part due to the fact that Murakami did help write the adaptation. Um, Miike emphasizes the difference between the first and the second half of the film through some really interesting editing and camera work. So the first half of the film shows Aoyama's naive and idealized view of Yamazaki Asami. The scenes move slowly, the dialogue is lethargically paced, and the colors seem pale and somehow washed out. After her disappearance, which takes place with a jarring cut and an otherwise sadly touching love scene, the colors are much more saturated and the camera frames actually become skewed. As Aoyama digs deeper into Yamazaki's past, he is plunged into her perverted world as well as his own obsession with her and this is definitely demonstrated in the cinematography. So for example, in the first part of the film, Aoyama asks Yamazaki, uh, asks about Yamazaki's past during one of their dates. This scene is a little strange. It appears to be a normal conversation, but every once in a while, like the scene kind of just jerks, um, almost like a part of their conversation has been edited out and then the movie spliced back together. After Aoyama is drugged by Yamazaki, Miike takes us back to this scene. This time, the colors are much more saturated and the parts of the conversation that were cut out before have been put back in. This gives the audience a chance to find out more about Yamazaki's tortured past, um, but it also leaves us to question if Aoyama actually knew about these aspects of her past and chose to disregard them, or if he was never told at all. Though Miike follows the events of the novel pretty closely, this does not really prevent him from adding some of his typical flair to the film. Uh, the gory description of Yamazaki's stepfather's withered feet, the severed tongue flopping on the floor, and of course the scene where Aoyama is tortured with acupuncture needles and stabbed underneath his eyes. That's all classic Miike. Furthermore, the disconnected dream sequence that takes place after Aoyama is drugged, it kind of puts a non-linear aspect to the narrative, and that's another technique that Miike really favors. Uh, though Takashi Miike insists that his film was not meant as social criticism, Murakami Ryu definitely had something to say within the pages of his psycho love thriller. In his afterword, included in the novel, he talks about the importance of past psychological trauma on people's lives and says that more people than ever before are suffering from this sort of condition. Uh, he cites Ilya Kazan's 1955 film adaptation of Steinbeck's East of Eden. And he states that without love, people must turn to violence to survive. That's a very similar theme that's found in his novel Coin Locker Babies, which is about uh, two boys who are abandoned by their mothers in coin lockers. 
um, and how that traumatic event basically influences the rest of their lives. Um, like these two men, Yamazaki Asami is a woman who cannot escape her traumatic past. And you really have to wonder if Yamazaki's problems and the reason why she's just so perverted is because of the distorted expectations placed on her. Unable to distinguish between right and wrong, Yamazaki is a true psychopath, and it makes her all the more terrifying because you know she just can't be reasoned with. So I translated the final chapter of Audition in which Aoyama lays immobilized by drugs on the floor and has his foot severed by butcher's wire. Now I selected this part not only because it's the climactic scene, but because it really highlights some of the differences between the film and the novel. In Mike's film, Aoyama is tortured in a very well done scene. He's paralyzed and all he can really do is lay there and be tortured by Yamazaki. Very similarly, as part of the audience, all we can do is passively watch as he's tortured. So there's definitely a very strong connection done in this scene. Um, another thing, in the audio commentary featured on the DVDs, Mike talks about how he filmed this in real time. He doesn't use a lot of cuts. When Yamazaki walks across the floor to grab more needles and walks back, that's not cut out. That's all added in, which really draws out the drama and the intensity of the scene. However, in the novel, the torture scene actually really doesn't exist. Yamazaki does torture the pet dog, which Mike chooses not to show, um, but then she leaves and Aoyama actually has the opportunity to try to escape, which he does. He tries to climb up the stairs and get to his son's room where he can lock the door and prevent uh, Asami from finding him. And the way Murakami really highlights the drama of this is he counts each stair as Aoyama climbs up them and it really becomes very suspenseful. Unfortunately, he doesn't make it in time and Yamazaki comes back and does sever his feet. But then he fights back, which is another interesting difference because in the movie, Aoyama is actually kind of passive. He can't do anything until his son, Shikehiko, comes back and saves him. In the book, it's actually Aoyama who kicks Yamazaki down the stairs, and though his son does appear later, he really does fight back and he's a lot less passive. So that's sort of my analysis of Takashi Miike's audition. I really think it's an awesome film, I think it's an awesome book. If you're interested, you should go to my blog and read the translation I posted. And if you haven't seen the film, definitely go and watch that film because it is really, really awesome. So. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys tune in for the next episode.